six pupils from various high schools across the country took top accolades at the Pan-African Mathematics Olympiad, which was held at the University of Botswana this week. The event was hosted by the Mathematical Association of Botswana. Uh, the South African team claimed medals in the individual as well as group categories. This year's competition focused on testing the young minds across six problems. These included algebra, geometry, number theory, and combinatory. Here to celebrate this big milestone and achievements, I'm joined now by Eric Senegal, a grade 11 learner at Hoover School Menlo Park in Pretoria, who earned a gold medal at the Pan-African Mathematics Olympiad. I'm also joined by the mathematics educator and the chairperson of the South African Mathematics Olympiads Problem Committee. That's Thomas Haxfield. Uh, Thomas and uh, Eric, good afternoon and thank you for your time. Eric, let me start with you. Um, <laughs> In my ambition, I looked at the problems from past papers uh, in terms of this Maths Olympiad, and I'll ask the team if they can to just show that on the screen. It looks like hieroglyphics to my mind, which is not great at mathematics, but you aced it and aced it, you know, better than anyone else at the Olympiad. Tell me how you're feeling and what it took for you to uh, earn the medal that you, you earned. Yes, thank you, Tula Caesar. It's quite it's quite a lot of effort putting into um, the mathematics Olympiad to be actually able to win a gold medal. As you said, it's very difficult questions. We get four and a half hours for three questions compared to like two hours for fifty or so questions at school. So it's it shows you quite the difficulty of the problems. Taking one and a half hours for each question and still not having enough time. It's quite a difficult problem. So you have to work hard. It, I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's one of those things you do have to work hard every day on those four subjects you told us about to be able to be successful. Sure. Did you have areas where you were particularly confident, Eric, that I will do well in this area and therefore I should prioritize that question and then uh, if I still have time, then go to the other questions just to top up and see how, how, how high... Uh, I can be ranked in this Olympiad. Yes, indeed. So we have the four subjects, and my main strong point is number theory. So we had a number theory question. It's quite, it was quite easy for me. And usually I struggle with geometry, but I think one of the key things that were actually um, made us to be able to win this competition was the geometry question is quite, was quite easy. So we, so we were all able to solve that question, and that helped us a lot. All right, let me bring you into this conversation, Thomas, uh, and good afternoon to you, Thomas Hagspill. Uh, tell me about the work that goes into preparing this team. These are young people from various schools that have to ultimately, in some instances, I imagine, work together uh, because they are individual and uh, group uh, categories. Tell me about what it took to have six of them doing so well. Well, there's, of course, first of all, the... Um, the, 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 the looking for who these kids are. You've got to do a talent search right through South Africa. Mm. And then they are sent regular problems. They have a training camp. Um, it's, it's really a rigorous process. Um, and as you know, the International Maths Olympiad, they, ha they left yesterday for a training session in, in Beijing, in fact. Um, it's a three-week session that they have um, in, in Beijing mm. before they go to the International Maths Olympiad. But I have to say, we're really proud of our, our pupils um, to take that gold. Well done, Eric, to you. It's really a fantastic achievement. And I'm glad you cracked the geometry question. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was really well done because, again, it, it's not so easy. So congratulations to you, Eric. So when you say, uh, Thomas, that you have to find these uh, pupils, what's the process involved there? And, and what does it reveal? Because mathematics education... Um, is one of those areas that remain an area of concern in the country's education system. What are you picking up as you are undertaking this process of picking up these young people that can ultimately uh, compete at the Pan-African level? Yeah, you know what, we, it's really important for us that the bright kids don't sit in our class bored out of their minds. And I think a lot of these bright children, um, Eric will be one of them, um, he, he, he knows what's going on in class immediately. There's no struggle for him. And so for us at the, 
South African Maths Olympia, uh, Olympiad and at the South African Maths Foundation, we really want to extend young, uh, bright young minds, um, you know, beyond what they do in the classroom. I mean, you need to know that getting an A for maths in matric is no longer um, a huge achievement, simply because if you do enough past papers um, and you work hard enough, an A is probably in the reach of a lot of people. But what these young minds are doing is they're doing real problem solving. So they get thrown non-routine problems that they've never seen before, which is very different in a matric exam. And I mean, I see it as you know, every year that the exams are written, the problems are always similar. Mm. Um, and it's not even a challenge anymore. Whereas what they're doing is unbelievable. They get thrown all kinds of things and then they have to, you know, use the techniques that they were trained in to solve some really, really difficult problems. Um, this is not, this isn't, this doesn't happen quickly. Yeah. Um, some years ago, a pupil of mine um, won the gold um, medal in the South African Maths Olympiad, and he spent two hours every day of his whole high school career doing mathematics. So sure. it takes a lot. Um, and they love it, I have to say. I mean, Eric, I don't know about you, but um, there's so many, it, it, it creates a community. There's a, there's, it's, it's wonderful. And, and, you know, they perhaps are seen as geeks. Hey, Eric, I don't know, do the kids at your school see you as a geek? <laughs> Are you saying um, the word he used whiz kids? They, We're seen as whiz kids. Yeah. I can't, I can't <laughs> hear what you're saying, Eric, it's but quite, anyway. It's quite an honor to participate in the Olympiad. Yeah. No, he's saying they use whiz kid uh, more than they use geek. <laughs> oh, is that, the, is that the new word, whiz kid? <laughs> well, that's nice because in some schools, you know, you see it as this geek, as this sort of alien. Yeah. You know? Thomas, I want to talk about the representation uh, of various school categories, various quintiles, and I think that's, that's more the question that I wanted to pose to you. Um, the way I understand it, you had a, a short list of what, 200 people, uh, pupils, and ended up having to narrow it down further. Uh, uh, what's the spread of young people coming through? I'm always amazed, for example, when I see in the metric results how well, uh, poor, uh, you know, less resourced areas of the country, such as schools in Limpopo, there are certain districts there where you'll see the mathematics mm. performance is really um, you know, impressive. So what's your sense of the representation across the various quintiles of schools? Yeah, Tula Sisi, that's really a tricky, it's a tricky thing in our country at the moment. And we in the South African Maths Olympiad have really seen that, that if teachers don't punt the Maths Olympiad and do the training with the children um, those children really struggle. So we've worked quite hard trying to get as many schools into this thing as possible. Um, but we haven't always been as successful. And so mm -hmm. even, even at um, some well-resourced schools, if the teachers don't do their thing yeah. um, and don't advertise the Maths Olympiad and don't tell and encourage the kids to do it, um, then nothing happens. And that's always for us a great sadness. Yeah. Um, and so unfortunately at this stage, there are a few exceptions. Um, I know Mbilwi High School up in Toyando. Mm. Um, there was another school that I did some training with down in rural KZN. Um, amazing. They have classes on a Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah. It was really quite inspiring. But on the whole, Tula sees where it's, it's not a great picture in our country. And you were alluding to it earlier. Yeah. The fact that the teaching of mathematics is still a great concern, yeah. um, and never mind Olympiad work, just the normal teaching yeah. is a problem. I want to give Eric a final word. Eric, so you've done well in this particular instance. Where do you plan to take this, uh, your, your passion and love for mathematics? Where do you think it will lead you? So I think the next step is try to participate in the International Mathematics Olympiad. I'm going to try and work hard for it next year. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully this will also be a part of my studies one day. Maybe in university I'll study something quite similar to math, using a lot of math for sure, because it's, it's, it's my passion. It's always been and it always will be, and I love it yeah. so much. All right. Congratulations once again and congratulations to the rest of the pupils who did exceptionally well at the Pan-African uh, Maths Olympiad. Uh, there was Eric Senegal, a grade 11 learner at Wuer School Menlo Park, as well as Thomas Hexpiel, uh, who was part of the team there that was leading those young people to that victory.